Hello and welcome to It's Your Case, brought to you by VetCT.com. I'm Lucy Meehan, I'm your radiologist on demand for this case. So today we have a four-year-old um, uh, thoroughbred mare used for racing that was presented um, with a four-week history of left forelimb lameness and a swelling over the carpus. Um, so there's quite a lot going on with these radiographs, um, but once you've reviewed them using your systematic approach, you're ready to watch this video. We're going to break the um, pathology down into two stages. We're first of all going to talk about um, the slab fracture of the third carpal bone, and then we're going to talk about the other changes going on that are probably secondary to the slab fracture. So. On the screen at the moment, uh, to the left, we have a lateromedial view of the corpus. We've got a flexed lateromedial view in the center and a dorsoproximal, dorsodistal oblique view, which was taken at 35 degrees um, in order to highlight the third carpal bone, which is this bone here. So this isn't a complete view, and we're going to talk about a complete series, and we're going to talk about the other views in a minute. Um, but at first, I just wanted to start by looking at the obvious pathology. So we've got our, if we look at our soft tissues, we've got a dorsal swelling here um, overlying the middle carpal joint. Remember, our middle carpal joint and our carpal metacarpal joint communicate. But you've got a, a dorsal soft tissue swelling. I'd say that's a moderate soft tissue swelling overlying the middle carpal joint. Um, this here is our third carpal bone and we can see there's a radiolucent line extending through our third carpal bone from the middle carpal joint to the carpal metacarpal joint. We can see that that joint is wider proximally than distally which indicates that the fragment is marginally displaced dorsally uh, in its proximal uh, aspect. We can see this line isn't particularly well defined and certainly if we look at our uh, dorsoproximal also distal oblique view, we can see this line is a little bit ill-defined and it is a little bit uh, blurry. Now, if we think this horse has had a four-week history of uh, lameness and swelling, that probably fits that we've got some lysis around the fracture line um, in that area. So we can see that really the fracture really well on the lateromedial view and we can also see it very well on the dorsoproximal dorsodistal oblique view and it's going through the medial portion of the third carpal bone or the radial facet of the third carpal bone. If we look at the lateral portion of the third carpal bone or the intermediate facet of the third carpal bone, we can see that's actually quite dense in appearance. It, it's quite white and we would call that sclerotic. We've also got some periarticular new bone just here and, and we've also got some at the junction of the third and the fourth carpal bone. So we've got a reasonable amount of periarticular new bone formation associated with this fracture here. With the fracture, we've got our sort of semicircular line that's going through the third radial facet of the third carpal bone, but we've also got some smaller lines that are radiating palmally. And that's quite common, and sometimes those can radiate a lot further palmally than we think. And certainly, if we did a computed tomography study on this limb, it may well have additional fracture lines going further palmally. And just if we look at our Flex lateromedia, you can see we've got a little bit of new bone on the dorsoproximal aspect of the third metacarpal bone and also on the third carpal bone here. So we've got a slab fracture. We suspect the slab fracture is slightly chronic and that would fit with our four week history, but we've also got quite a lot of periarticular new bone formation. If we look at our other view, so I'm going to put the dorsolateral view on the left, the dorsal plantar view centrally, and then the dorsal medial view to the right of the screen. We can see that, um, again, we can see this very pronounced middle carpal joint effusion. That's much more pronounced on this dorsal medial aspect of the joint. And if I just zoom in a little bit, we can see we've got some fairly proliferative new bone formation just on the dorsal medial central aspect of the radial carpal bone, periarticular new bone formation on the middle carpal joint here, and then also on the carpal metacarpal joint there. Similarly, I mean, we can't really see very much on the DP. You may just suspect a little bit of new bone formation here, dorsal medially, but certainly it's not as marked as on the other views, which just highlights why we need um, all of the views that, that we have. And then if we look at the dorsal lateral aspect of the uh, carpal joints, you can see a tiny little bit of new bone formation 
in the antibrachiocarpal joint, which or the radiocarpal joint, which is probably not associated with this um, sclerotic change, or, or sorry, the slab fracture and the sclerotic change within the third carpal bone. And you can see we've got quite a lot of proliferative new bone formation here. So we've got a chronic fra slab fracture of the third carpal bone, and we've also got fairly marked osteoarthritis of the middle carpal joint with a lot of proliferative new bone formation in this horse. Um, the likely cause of this is maladaptive remodelling as a response to training and racehorses are relatively prone to slab fractures um, of the third carpal bone um, and it's not uncommon if you radiograph the contralateral limb it's likely you will have some degree of sclerosis and increased vascular channels within the third carpal bone uh, in the contralateral limb most often in the radial facet so this is quite a common injury it's very important to recognize it um, and it's also very important to recognize that there may be secondary changes within the carpus because of the fracture uh, and, and if they're left you can you end up with arthritis of the middle carpal joint. I hope that's answered any questions that you had on this case. Please don't forget it is your case so if you have any further questions, comments or queries please don't hesitate to contact us via the social media platforms. Thank you very much for listening.